Hey gang, welcome back to another video. So this week I decided I wanted to do something a little bit different from usual. Now, of course, I'll have my tips and techniques, but the thing I'll be making for this video might be going home with you. So let's get into it. Before I can get started, I'll need a sign for this technique, and I thought that this one eye laser cut from MDF would be a good candidate. It's already been sealed with clear coat to prevent the MDF from absorbing the paint, so I can jump right into adding some texture. And for that, I'll be using one of my favorite methods, spray adhesive. The brand and version of spray adhesive isn't as important as how it sprays. This one leaves a nice fine texture when applied and will be perfect for this sign. Once I've built up a few layers, I'll add even more regularity with some baby powder. I'll do this step in multiple layers, applying more spray adhesive as needed until the deepest part of the sign has sort of a pitted texture. Then I'll remove any excess powder from the sign and set it aside to dry. After a few minutes, I can get to my base layers of paint, starting with a caramel color and a dark brown. The caramel color can be applied to the entire sign, making sure to get into all the recesses, and once I've got good coverage, I can switch over to the dark brown. For this layer, I'm aiming for a mottled appearance, so I try to dust the surface, moving in irregular patterns until I get a good mix of the two colors without it looking too intentional. When I'm happy with its appearance, I'll allow it to dry for a bit before moving on to the next step. With the base paint applied, you can see the texture a bit better. I definitely could have gone heavier with the powder layer in some places, but overall I like the direction this is going. Now comes the fun part, highlighting the raised elements of the sign. And for this, I'll be using some antique gold acrylic paint. I'll start by applying this with a dry brush to help build depth in the finish and then we'll go back with more paint to make some areas brighter than others. This should help to give it an old and worn look. You could use rub and buff for this as well. I just prefer paint because I find it easier to use a brush for the smaller letters. Plus paint can be much more forgiving if you end up getting it in places you didn't intend to. When all the letters in outer band are painted, I'll remove as much of the paint from my brush, and then we'll dry brush the entire surface with whatever's left to give it just a slight hint of gold. This isn't something you'll necessarily see, but it helps to tell the story of this old cemetery sign. With that out of the way, we can get into aging the sign with color washes. I've mixed up a small amount of white acrylic paint and water, somewhere in the range of one part paint to 10 parts water, and we'll use it to create a calcified water stain look. This will be applied in a few layers with dry time in between to give it depth, and I'll keep a damp towel to blot away any areas where the wash may be pooling or just generally not looking how I want it to. This kind of staining is really common on grave markers and I thought this was a good opportunity to use this look for aging this sign. Another great thing about this method is that it dries fairly quick, so you can get a real sense of how it looks and whether or not you'll need to apply more to achieve the look you're after without having to wait a long time for the paint to dry. Now that the sign is completely dry, you can see just how layered the staining is and how much it helps to accentuate the textures we created at the beginning. And while most people will likely be seeing this at night, it's these types of details that really sell the piece. The next step in this project is to add a bit of patina with some heavily watered down teal acrylic paint. This is a similar approach to the water staining, but rather than spraying it on, I'll be using a small brush to add just a few random hints of color to the sign. I'm using the water staining layer to help guide my placement, since it would make sense organically that the areas with more staining would likely be the first to discolor. So I identified a few of the big concentrations of white wash and dabbed some of the teal paint in those areas to make it just a bit more interesting. In the event that I added too much paint, I could dry out my brush on a paper towel and use it to wick up the excess. 
That way, I'm not left with any areas where the patina is unrealistic or distracting. I decided to show a little restraint with this layer, but you can add as much or as little as you think works for your prop and the environment it'll be seen in. As a final touch once everything had dried, I went back in with a lighter gold color and highlighted just a few random letters on the sign. This will give it just a little pop since the washes have dulled down the other paints and will add to the overall depth we've created with each layer. And with that, the sign is done and ready to be shipped off to its new owner. So here's how you can take this sign home with you. Comment on this video and tell me where you'd use this in your haunt. Or if you're just a collector of antique looking signs, tell me where you display this in your collection. I'll pick a winner at random and we'll post the winner over on my Instagram account, so be sure to give me a follow over there if you're not already following. Well, that's going to do it for this one. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. But most importantly, go make something. Now, I know over the last few months I've complained about how much rain we've been having here in Los Angeles, but today, this is a new one for me. We've been having rolling thunder, which is a first. It's wild, and of course, it's probably gonna stop now that I'm filming, but, oh, lightning. This is wild. What is happening to California? <laughs> Be safe out there, everybody.